I poured this the other day and I really liked it. it I call these dirty pours or ribbon pours. I really liked it. It looked very nice, but I did end up using a lot of paint. So I decided I wanted to try this again, but with less paint. So these are the colors that I'm going to be using for this pour. I'm using a cobalt blue sea green, which is a bit like a phthalo green, a metallic copper and an unbleached titanium. I just decided that I would actually change the colors for this pour. But before I begin, I just wanted to say thanks very much for visiting my channel. I really do appreciate it. And if you're enjoying what you're watching, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, and stick around to the end because I do have a surprise for you. But, you know, let's get into the pour. So I've poured everything into the cups. You'll see I'm actually using an old canvas. I poured this canvas and I didn't particularly like it. So, but I wanted to show you, you know, that you can recycle these canvases. What I have found is it's best that if you've poured a canvas, it's better to just pour straight over the canvas. Don't re-gesso. I've gessoed before and I find it, and it doesn't bind to the whole canvas. I don't know why and then the gesso lifts off and you get like little it puckering it just looks awful so if you've poured something you don't like it just pour pour right on top of it it's fine so also i used 180 grams i think it was 180 grams of paint in the last one that i've just shown you and i've knocked this right down to 140 grams so let's and why I wanted to change my paint, well, use less paint, was I felt like my lines were a little bit too close together and I wanted to be able to stretch them out a bit. I wondered if having less paint would give me that ability. I don't think that that will look nice though if I... I've got a bit of a gap there that I'm not sure about, but anyway, that's the whole point of using less paint is so that I have to stretch my paint more on the canvas. I do like, I, I do quite like this color combination. So now why I tend to do, whenever I do a, a dirty pour I, I, or a ribbon pour, I think these, I, I call them dirty pours. But why I always do them in two cups is because I used, if you see here, this color is, here is now actually quite muddied compared to the pure colors that come out at the to, at, the, at the beginning of the cup. Oh, look inside that cup. Isn't that look so pretty? <gasps> Lovely. And I found that when I used to first do these, I would go all the way, you know, I'd start on one side I'd say start here and I'd keep going and by the time I got to here the color in the cup was completely different to that color so I found by splitting them I got more control I guess of my colors and so I preferred it 
I'm going to use my torch. Got some nice cells here. I think it's because I use unbleached titanium. It's a very heavy. So I haven't actually um, played with my consistencies in this particular. Because I don't always worry about cells when I do ring pours. I keep pouring the ring pours and I'm annoying myself ribbon pores or dirty pores i don't personally really worry about cells in these that is bothering me though i don't know if i've stuffed that up anyway it's a bit late now and this one also worries me i'm just trying to stitch up some paint there without letting it get too muddy That's the, always the risk, is your paint will get too muddy. Maybe I'll be able to tip it off. Oh, it looks okay. Oh, I like it. I do like it. So, what am I going to do first? I think I'm going to tip this way. Move some of that paint down this way. This paint was also thicker. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to start attaching paint because I can see, because this paint is actually already quite thick, I can see that when I start tipping, I'm going to lose a lot of paint. And I, that's, I don't want that to happen. So I'm just, by doing this, all I'm doing is helping it to, you know, it's not going to get like um, stuck on the canvas which, you know, sometimes paint does that it, and uh, it, it gets, you know, you try and move it and it just won't, it's like there's a barrier there and it just won't move. It's so irritating. But that's why I want to stitch up this before I really start pouring. Um, so that it's got, it's got the ability, the paint's got the ability to travel and nothing's going to really stop it. So it does take time doing this, but, you know, I have time. One thing I also, when you do this, you need to be very careful because I've done it where I've gone, I've put paint and I've gone like that and then I've dribbled paint. So you need to come around, like around your canvas when you're doing it on the other side. You can see I'm just attaching that to the other paint so this cup now has got quite muddy see what's going on in my second cup and my fingers very muddy yeah that's actually less muddy see this is why it's also quite nice sometimes to have two cups it just helps Quite excited to pour the, to tip this one I think it might come out quite nice I'm definitely these are definitely the sort of colors that I like working with oh I almost did that where I put some paint I went a little too fast and it almost stripped across there but luckily it didn't now I'm just doing this side Right, now it's time to do some tipping and move that paint off the canvas. So I don't want to lose that composition too much, so I need to move it back here so I can get this off, the weight of the paint, push this lot off Yeah, because it doesn't look that nice. Come on, go. I don't want to lose too much paint. Come on, off you go there in that end. This does look very nice. Let me do it so you can see what I'm doing, hopefully.
not so much liking this end bit here. So I want to see if I can move some of the paint down and move it off. Hmm. Let me switch around because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing as well. So that's one of the things that is interesting when you, you know, you start tipping off your paint. You lose, you, you know, you can lose. And that's why I tend to like to have more paint than less. If I can help, if you know, if I've got the choice, because then I've got the ability to be, um, you know, I've, I've got the luxury that I can sort of push paint around. So then looking at this, I would say that I think I could have done with just a bit more paint. And the only reason why I'm saying that is I don't like these ends. They haven't come out as nicely as I would have liked. I wonder if there's some way I can, because I really like what's happening there. This is similar. This side is similar to this side. So if I could try and move that over just a little bit more, let me see if I can do that and push some of that paint off on this side yeah oh, that's actually getting better I think it's a delicate case of making sure you can see what I'm doing yeah that's better that is getting better I think I'm going to get to a place now where I'm going to stop because I run the risk of overworking this piece very shortly. I just want to see if I can... You know, sometimes when you do this, you've got to massage the paint a bit. Is that what I'm trying to do there? Just get that last bit off. And then I think I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Lost my cup there, so I just had to straighten that up. Hmm. So. Oh, not sure. So the last one was 180, this is 140. I think the sweet spot would be 160. Let me see if I could get some cells to come up. Watching, the jade is coming through much stronger, which is giving it a sound you know, real. Because the jade is actually really quite nice, and often it can dry quite dark. So it has got little cells, like little bit pinpricky, but it's not. It's in keeping with the whole effect. And why I wanted a torch was. This end bit here was starting to look a little muddy, but by torching, I've pulled up. Um, it does look a little pinpricky, but it's it's still good. So yeah, I think the sweet spot would be 160. But that said, I'm actually very happy with this. I think this is really quite lovely. I'll bring you in for a close up. So I want to bring you in to have a look at the end result. I do think this looks really lovely. I love the colours. It's, it's come out really nicely. Um, and I like the cells through it. 
they're a little bit smaller than I'm used to, but I still think it's in keeping with the whole composition. This section I wasn't too sure about. Let me find my finger. This section I wasn't too sure about. Looked a bit muddy, but if I take you in close, when I used the heat gun, it brought up those little cells, and I think that's that saved it. It's just kind of given it a bit of definition, so thank goodness for that. But it is... I'm just wondering how it'll dry because the green I've used, the sea green or the sort of phthalo green can dry very dark. But I think it'll be okay because I've used the unbleached titanium. So let's wait to see. So I just wanted to take you in for a side, a side by side comparison. These have both dried and they've actually dried really nicely. I was a little bit worried about the sea green because it can dry really dark. But it hasn't it it looks nice in this piece and it, it is in sections quite dark but it sort of adds to the gradient and the the whole overlook of the you know the, the whole look of the painting i'll sort of take you down you know and i think it still looks really nice i am actually happy with both of these pieces i think they look lovely just doing a sort of a close visual of them. And you could even hang them side by side. I am glad that I sort of tipped this a little bit further and changed that section there. And the purpose of this was, there was 180 grams of paint here and 140 here. And I wanted to do less paint so I could stretch out my lines and I think that definitely has worked from that perspective and it wasn't meant to happen but I like how it sort of went I went off the side there and I went so it looks like it's balanced this section I was a little bit worried about let me show you but it's actually come out fine it looks really good the only thing that's annoyed me and I don't think you'll be able to see it but I'll take you in anyway when I was moving this painting this little piece of clear stuff dropped into it. it was so irritating. You, you you can't see it in the overall thing. And it, when it's resined, it would be fine. But she said it was cross when it happened. So all in all, I think they both look nice. And in conclusion, I think going forward, I would definitely be using less paint to get my sort of lines to open out more so i think it's been successful from that perspective